this document now as far as the structural provisions go contains very little text in it. Pretty much everything has been removed in favor of reference to this other document ACE 7, the national loading standard specifically the 2005 edition and wind is definitely no exception. You go to section 16 or 9 of 2006 IBC, the section on wind, it is down to 2 or 3 pages which have very little material in them. Even simplified wind design is no longer to be found in the code. Everything is in this other document AC7, meaning wind design of 2006 IBC is the same as wind design of AC705. You will see in AC7, ultimately we will go down to this equation. The pressure due to wind, lowercase p, is given in AC7 as a product of a lowercase q, which is called the velocity pressure, then a gas defect factor g, and then an external pressure coefficient c sub p. Now, out of the three terms in that very important equation for design wind pressure, the first term, the velocity pressure, has everything to do with atmospheric effects, very little to do with aerodynamic effects very little to do with the properties of the structure and so forth. It has everything to do with wind flow and, and that sort of thing. C sub p is the other way around. It is all related to the structure, not so much to the wind flow. And the G is a combination of the two. It deals with atmospheric as well as aerodynamic effects. This is again just a broad perspective. Okay? We, we have to deal with both, we have no choice. In the earthquake section, which is now multiple chapters, we have approximate period and we have rational period computation. Approximate period is almost invariably lower than rationally computed period. It is deliberately that way, the idea being if we do not later refine our period estimate, we start seismic design with approximate period. If we do not later refine our period estimate, the design should remain on the conservative side. The shorter the period, the larger the design by shear, the more conservative the design. In wind design, it is the other way around. For gust effect factor computation, the shorter the period, the less conservative you are. So, the question always came up. When the wind subcommittee says you can use period computation of the earthquake section, can I use the approximate period formula or does it have to be rational period computation? There was never any answer to that. Most of us use the approximate period formulas and that was at least in, in, in accordance with the letter of the standard. ACE705 has brand new commentary in the wind chapter that tells you how to compute period. Um, I'm going to go through chapter 6 of ASCE 705, uh, just the beginning part. And this is a provision that's right there up front in chapter 6, sec section 6.1.4. And this is something that a lot of people will overlook. They may not even know that this requirement is there. And it's really a standalone requirement. It's not related to the simplified method. It's not related to the analytical method, a wind tunnel method. What it is, is a basic minimum that you need to design your building for, for wind pressure. And that minimum is 10 pounds per square foot applied on the projected area. It's not to be combined with any other loading case. It's just its own unique loading case. So you need to check this in addition to whatever you come up with 
with the other uh, wind design method. So far, wind tunnel testing has not been standardized, and, and that has been a bit of a problem. Uh, I, I, uh, anyway, let's not go into uh, a, a wind tunnel testing standard is in very advanced stages of preparation within AAC, and there is almost no doubt that the next edition of AAC 7 which by the way will be dated 2010, not 2008, it will be a five year cycle, will reference this wind tunnel testing standard. So for the first time ever, we will have standardized wind tunnel testing and I think that will be a pretty significant improvement.